Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about how we can handle exceptions in Blazor app. It's a little tricky in Blazor app because it makes Signal connection with the browser and then it uses that connection to perform all the operations. And whenever an exception happens, it breaks this it breaks this connection, it breaks that circuit, and then user cannot really do anything until it until the user reloads their browser. Whenever they reload the browser, then server makes another connection, and then you can use uh, use your Blazor application. So this is what we're gonna learn today: how we can show a message and a feature where user uh, knows to reload the application because not all the users know that they have to reload the application in order to access their pages and if you're already created your project using 3.1 version asp.net core 3.1 you already have it um, uh, you already have that message as part of your project template but if you have not created your project using 3.1 or greater then you'll have to include this message and I'm going to show you how you can include that message and give a reload link so the user knows how to they'll have to reload uh, the application to uh, to access their pages if they cannot access a particular functionality the second thing that I'm going to talk about is how you can troubleshoot these exceptions. You know, these exceptions are happening in different places like, you know, on event handlers, on on, on click event, or these are happening on, on initialized like lifecycle methods, or when you leave the page, or, you know, it happens when you're trying to dispose the component, or, you know, at ran rendering logic, you don't check your collection is null or not before you um, ren try to render it in your HTML code, or any when you're trying to call a JavaScript function, or you are trying to use dependency injection in your in your Blazor application. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to throw exceptions on all these places and see how Blazor application is behaving. And then I can, I'll can i show you how you can troubleshoot these places, how you can troubleshoot this exception. And uh, you know, you know, you can surround them by try and catch block to handle these exceptions. All right, for demo, um, I'm going to use my Blazor application that I've been working on uh, for this video series. Um, I'm going to use my authors page, which is calling an API uh, from here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw some exceptions here so that uh, we um, uh, so that we see how our Blazor application is working. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw an exception on this delete link uh, because I want to see on uh, what happens when an exception happens on an event handler. All right, uh, so I will go to my authors page and um, on, on delete author, I'm gonna throw an exception here. I'm gonna say that I wanna throw a new exception and I'm gonna send a message that is delete author exception. As delete author exception, sweet. So if I go to my authors page and click on delete, you can see that it's showing this unhandled exception message and you'll have to see dev tools to see, um, you know, what, what the exact details of this exception is. And it gives you this reload link so that when you reload the application, then you can access other pages of the pages of your application. If I click on this delete exception happens, if I go to different pages, it doesn't really go unless and until I reload my my application. Th that's when it makes another connection and then you can access other pages of your application. Uh, so where is that message? The message um, is in this host.cshtml. So anywhere in your application, if an exception happens, it shows this piece of div tag. And if, like I said, if you've created your Blazor application from 3.1, you will see this part of your part of your project template. But if you have not, you'll have to include this piece of dev tag in your in your project. Another thing that you need to do is you'll have to put um, uh, some CSS for the message, which is this piece of code, 
we'll have to include that and my project is on github so you can go and clone this project and copy this piece of code um, uh, if you do not have it all right so this is how the message is saying so how do we troubleshoot this error we know the user knows now they they'll have to reload the application in order to um in order to access other pages but how do we figure out what exactly is happening on this delete click so if i you can you know figure out what's happening um go in in this out um output window on visual studio you can see that this is throw an exception but then again you'll have to like scroll through all the output um uh, output window to figure out you know where that exception is happening another cool way that you can um, uh, you can find what's happening is you can go to your it's here in console it's not really showing what exception is happening it's just saying that there's an unhandled exception has happened and the circuit is terminated you if you need more information you'll have to go in your app settings and say detailed errors to true so let's go ahead and do that so if i go to my app settings and i'm gonna say detail error to true and then let's uh, let's throw in another exception see what happens and if i go and click on delete again you can see that it's throwing an exception and here now I have detailed uh, of where that exception happened on line number 229 and what was that exception and how then I can go to this line and try and see what exception happened and then try and fix it make sure that you add this detailed error just for your development or system testing to not add this uh, for your production deployment please keep your app settings um, separate from uh, your production otherwise you know your client will be able to see what exception is happening and what line number is that all right so for now i am going to uh, put uh, this exception in try and catch in my next episode i'm going to show you how you can uh, how you can um, log these exceptions but right now I'm just going to put them in uh, try and catch and not throw an exception. Nice. So this is, um, uh, we got this exception on event handler. Let's check out lifecycle method and what, what happens when uh, a lifecycle uh, method throws an exception. So I'm going to throw an exception uh, on, on initialize. Let's copy this code. Let's copy this throw. And put it here. Here, and I'm gonna name it as uninitialized, and see what happens. So if I go to authors, you can see that it's directly throwing an exception. It not even let me go to authors page. It's saying that a system exception has happened. It's called as uninitialized exception and it's showing which line number it was throwing an exception if i and it's if i try and go to different pages it's gonna not let me go until i reload my application nice uh you can get exceptions on um, i'm gonna put this again on try and catch so that we don't get this exception again exception again uh, we can also get an exception when we are trying to dispose the component when we try to leave the component try to go to a different uh, different page we could get an exception here so i'm going to copy this and throw an exception on dispose make sure that you have i disposable um i disposable you know, interface implements in your um, in your component to dispose your uh, dispose your component sweet uh, here let's change the name of this so that we get a proper exception so when I go to authors now I'm not getting any exception but if I leave the component then it throws an exception 
and sometimes you know developers think that you know you're getting an exception on on initialized of these components but actually you are getting an exception when you're trying to dispose the component and that you can figure that out by going in console and see that it's calling dispose exception at line number 202 at line number 202 so yeah you can get exceptions on dispose and this is how you can troubleshoot these exceptions uh, next exception uh, I'm going to talk about if if you're trying to render um, a collection if you're trying to render a collection for this page you're trying to render authors and uh, when um, when authors are trying to, uh, trying to render what if that collection is null so here you can see that I'm using a uh, for edge for this collection and uh, what if this author list is null? I am loading my author list in my on initialized async so instead of loading the exception or uh, the author list here I'm gonna say that my author list is null I'm gonna say it's null nice. let's run this So when I go to authors, then I'll get an exception and the exception will tell you that, you know, object reference is not set to an instance and it'll say it's build render tree. It gives you a line number so that, you know, you know that uh, it's an HTML error, but this build render tree gets called when, uh, when your when .NET Core is trying to render your component it uh, it calls this function and this is where an exception is happening because your author list is null so uh, you can either make sure that our author list is um, author list is always full or you can um, you can say that you know only um, only show this piece of code when when authors is not equal to null otherwise do not show anything I'm gonna put this in put this in if box and you can show any message in else too if you want to but you know uh, you can put if and uh, uh, get rid of that exception and user can still work on other pages of your application so authors I'm not getting an exception and it only gets rendered when authors is equal to uh, is not null. All right, so um, another place an exception can happen is um, JavaScript. Um, so let's first um, fix this piece of code. Let's see, it's, um, it's not no. We already have some authors. And I am using the select city, select city component to, um, to select city on my on my authors page on my authors page here select city component uh, and the select city component calls a JavaScript function called the JavaScript function called as get cities and which is defined here what if there's an exception in JavaScript then how do we handle that or how do we what does uh, does blizzard tell us like there's an exception so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw an exception here and call it something has gone wrong in JS. Nice. All right. And let's run this. So if I try to go to my authors page, you can see that my drop down is not getting loaded because this is a select city component. And I'm getting an exception saying that you know something has gone wrong. Um, and it says Microsoft JS and dropped JS exception something has gone wrong so that's how you know that there's a JavaScript exception in your application so make sure that you and it also tells you which line it is line number 26 in select city that's where we are calling our line number 26 our JavaScript function here so I'm also going to put this in try and catch block um, I could put this in JavaScript login, but I want to keep my logs, all of my logs at one place. 
So that's the reason why I'm going to put this in my um, in my try and catch. All right. So the last place an exception could happen uh, is um, when you initialize a component. Um, for this demo, you know, I have um, I have injected this author service um, uh, class and interface so that I could use some of uh, some of the functionality from there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw an exception. I'm gonna throw an exception in my in my author service in my author service, which is um, you know we are implementing iAuthor. If I go to my startup class you can see that i'm creating a singleton uh, um, singleton instance of author service and that's what's been used in my author authors.razor all right so uh, what i'm going to do i'm going to throw an exception here when i'm trying to initialize this service and see what happens i'm going to say throw uh, throw a new exception and i'm going to call it as an author service exception an office service exception and see what happens so if I go on authors it's it'll throw an exception and it will throw a big exception saying that you know something has gone wrong like there's an author exception line number 14 and we are trying to invoke a method we are trying to use dependence injections when we visit a constructor that's when the exception is happening but you get this exception when you have the definition of uh, um, of your dependency what if what if you do not have dependency what if you uh, have this dependency where you do not uh, uh, you do not it's a third party dependency like uh, like for my uh, for authentication I'm using authentication state provider and what if an exception happens when we are trying uh, when you're trying to initialize this dependency um, what I'm gonna do I'm gonna copy this code copy this code and paste it here and say that it is a custom authenticator a custom authentication state provider so we should get this exception right when we um, when we run the application um, let's see what happens So when I run the application, it just fails. It doesn't really show anything. And it doesn't even tell us like what exception has happened. It, uh, it just says the circuit failed to initialize and that's it. I'm still working on it and I'm gonna try and figure out how we can troubleshoot these exceptions. Um, and in my next video, I'm gonna talk about uh, how we can log these exceptions. So yeah, stay tuned. If you have any questions, uh, you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.